today we are going to discuss about the anatomical divisions of the nervous system uh, myself dr muralidhar badigir department of sharachana gramin ayurvedic medical college terdal karnataka so before going to start the anatomical divisions first we are going to define little bit we are going to revise uh, definition of the nervous system the system which control and coordinate all the activities of the body by transmitting the signals to and from the different part of the body through the stimuli integration response mechanism that system is known as nervous system or in simple form a stimuli is pursued and according to that the integration is done and after that it produces the appropriate uh, response so in short you can define the nervous system as stimuli integrate sorry stimuli response system are uh, followed by the integration so that system is known as nervous system or stimuli response a uh, system is called by the name of nervous system so here the stimuli is pursued through the sensory input and integration is done by the central nervous system it may be brain and the spinal cord and after that there will be a output that's called motor output after that straight away i am coming to the topic the anatomical divisions of the nervous system after that we are going to discuss about the physiological uh, classification of the nervous system so anatomically the nervous system is divided into two basic units that is called the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system so central nervous system further divided into two parts one is the brain and the spinal cord and peripheral nervous system is divided into mainly two parts that's called cranial nerves and the spinal nerves so first come to the point the central nervous system the central nervous system which includes the two parts one is the brain and the uh, spinal cord first we are going to discuss about the brain so the brain is further divided into three parts that's called fore brain mid brain and the hind brain the fore brain is also known as prosencephalon and mid brain is also known as mesencephalon and hind brain is also known as rhombencephalon so first we are going to discuss about the uh, fore brain the fore brain are further divided into two parts one is a telencephalon another one is the diencephalon so telencephalon itself it, uh, it is a uh, it's also known as cerebrum or telencephalon includes the cerebrum so cerebrum further divided into a uh, lobes a frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe temporal lobe insula and the limbic lobe in the most of the time limbic lobe is considered under the physiology so diencephalon uh, it is present at the deep part of the cerebrum or inferior part of the cerebrum or deep part of the cerebrum so that group of the nuclei is called by the name of diencephalon so diencephalon that includes thalamus metathalamus hypothalamus subthalamus and epithalamus see here how to remember diencephalon is in the center and uh, telencephalon is the periphery easy to remember i think all of you are seeing the center a beautiful lady a diana diana is in the center and telescopes are in the periphery because uh, boys are observing the uh, beautiful girls or beautiful lady by using the telescopes by uh, by uh, sitting in the sides it mean telescopes are kept on periphery to observe the central part so telescopes that is present in the periphery are nothing but the telencephalon and center whatever the part is there so that is called by the name of diencephalon so first we are going to discuss about the telencephalon telencephalon is nothing but the cerebrum cerebrum is a further divided into frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe temporal lobe then the question where is the insula there is another lobe and another lobe is limbic lobe so first we are going to discuss frontal lobe the frontal lobe and parietal lobe are separated by the deep sulcus that's called central sulcus and parietal lobe and occipital lobes are separated by another sulcus that's called parieto occipital sulcus and frontal lobe and temporal lobe separated by the sulcus so that is called by the name of lateral sulcus so we have seen frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe temporal lobe but where is the insula and limbic lobe see the insula once identified the lateral sulcus identify the lateral sulcus here and retract the lateral sulcus after retracting the lateral sulcus you will get a lobe inside the lobe in it is insulated by frontal lobe parietal lobe 
and temporal lobe. So this insulated lobe is called by the name of insula. This is the insula. And come to the point, in short, we are going to discuss about the uh, functions of these uh, areas. See, uh, cerebrum is uh, divided. Cerebrum means here the telencephalon. Telencephalon is uh, divided or cerebrum is divided into four lobes basically anatomically by the help of sulcus that is the first one is the lateral sulcus second one is central sulcus third one is the parieto occipital sulcus so this is the frontal lobe frontal lobe is the uh, mainly the fun main function of the frontal lobe is motor functions motor activities parietal lobe uh, sensory activities and temporal lobe is mainly related to the smell and the hearing and occipital lobe is visual processing Next, after completion of the telencephalon, next come to the point, uh, thalamus. Thalamus, uh, metathalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus and the epithalamus, these are the subdivisions of the diencephalon. Here the main entities are thalamus and the hypothalamus. See, thalamus is the egg-shaped structure which is present at the base of the cerebrum. So, it is a two egg-shaped structures. So, these are called by the name of Thalamus. Thalamus is mainly for the sensory information processing. So it means it pursues the, all the sensory input. So because of that reason, thalamus is also known as sensory relay station. And next is hypothalamus. Just below the thalamus, just below the thalamus, there is a, another small area that is called by the name of hypothalamus. So, this is the area hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is also known as, a uh, mainly it is uh, related to the autonomic control. So, it is also known as the biggest autonomic ganglia, even though it is a misnomer instead of the nucleus. So, next is the metathalamus and subthalamus and the epithalamus. Here is the metathalamus. The metathalamus is uh, nothing but the a pituitary gland and the medial and lateral geniculate bodies and next there will be another one is epithalamus epithalamus which includes the pineal gland and habinular nucleus so all of you know pineal gland is mainly related to the uh, biological clock and also you know metathalamus is nothing but the medial and lateral geniculate body plus uh, pituitary gland and pituitary gland is the master gland of the all the endocrine glands and subthalamus. Subthalamus is a small grey matter piece which is situated between the superior part of the midbrain and inferior part of the thalamus. Here is the midbrain and here is the thalamus. Between these two structures there is a small piece of the grey matter. So that is called by the name of subthalamus. So next one is the midbrain. So the midbrain is the small piece of the uh, tissue, it is a nervous tissue which connects the brain stem and the uh, you can say that is forebrain. The forebrain and hindbrain both are connected by the help of the midbrain. This is the midbrain. So you can see in this picture this area. This area is the midbrain and remaining is the brain stem. So hindbrain. So this hindbrain and this uh, forebrain connected through the piece of the tissue here. This is part is called by the name of the midbrain. Midbrain pons medulla oblongata see after the midbrain or midbrain don't have any further classification so it is the only connecting structure between the hindbrain and the forebrain next directly we are moving to the hindbrain so the hindbrain a further it is divided into two parts one is a metencephalon and another one is the myelencephalon so the metencephalon is further divided into two parts that is pons and the cerebellum so myelencephalon which includes the medulla oblongata so myelencephalon means only the medulla oblongata metencephalon which includes pons and the cerebellum so if you are taking the cerebellum the cerebellum which further it is anatomically divided into anterior lobe posterior lobe and floculonodular lobe so these are the subdivisions of the hind brain so among them this pons and the medulla oblongata they are continuation of the the spinal cord, the functions we are going to discuss later, but main uh, cerebellum, the functions of the cerebellum is to balance the body. See in this picture, this is the pons and these two things are the cerebellar hemispheres. Pons and cerebellar hemisphere, this includes the metencephalon and remaining part, this part is medulla oblongata which includes the myelencephalon. So 
See, in this picture, you can see this is the medulla oblongata, this is the pons, this is the midbrain, these are the thalamus. So, this thalamus are related to the diencephalon, this is the midbrain which connects the forebrain and the hindbrain and this is the pons, pons and here is the cerebellum. So, these two includes the metencephalon and remaining part, this is the medulla oblongata which comes under the myelencephalon. And come to the point, cerebellum, the main function of the cerebellum is to balance the body. The balancing the body are two types, one is a kinetic balance, another one is the static balance. In the standing position, we are balancing the body, that is called a static balance and while walking or running, uh, at that time we are balancing the body, so that is called by the name of kinetic balance. And all of you know a funny thing, after taking the alcohol, a person is not able to balance the body, it means uh, the cerebellum is not able to do their function and all the motor almost all the skilled full activities of the movement of the finger all these the skilled activities are done by the cerebellum and come to the point PNS already you know CNS and PNS so PNS it is a further divided into two parts cranial nerves 12 pairs and spinal nerves 31 pairs so first come to the point cranial nerves the cranial nerves, uh, <coughs> how many cranial nerves are there? So generally we know 12 pairs. But there is a even more cranial nerves that's called zero cranial nerve. So we'll discuss that point later. So but the PNS which includes the nerves, they are connecting peripheral part to the central nervous system. So the first cranial nerves, this is the olfactory nerve, olfactory to the nose, optic nerve to the eyes, oculomotor also to the eyes, trochlear to the eyes, abducens to the eyes and trisemnal nerve that is supplying to the face and after the trisemnal next you will get the facial nerve supplying to the face and along with the facial nerve there is another nerve that is called vestibular cochlear nerve and another nerve that is supplying to the tongue that is called glossopharyngeal nerve and the longest cranial nerve that is the most of the abdominal organs are covered so that is vagus nerve and after that there will be hypoglossal nerve and there is a accessory nerve. Accessory and hypoglossal nerve. These are the 12 pairs of the cranial nerves. And next come to the point, a spinal nerve. Spinal nerves are 31 pairs. So these 31 pairs of the spinal nerves arising from the spinal cord, they are divided into groups. Cervical group, thoracic group, lumbar group and the sacral group and coccygeal is one. So these are the uh, spinal nerves. So now I completed the anatomical divisions of uh, nervous system. Next we are going to discuss about the physiological division of the nervous system. So physiological uh, uh, divisions of the nervous system, almost all it is the same. CNS, PNS, CNS includes brain and spinal cord, PNS includes the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. But in the PNS, a little bit change will be there. We are going to discuss that point. Physiologically, PNS is divided into two parts. One is a sensory peripheral nervous system, another one is motor peripheral nervous system. So sensory uh, peripheral nervous system means the nervous system which collects the information or stimulus from the peripheral part and dumping into the central nervous system. And motor PNS means it collects the information from the central nervous system, then it is transmitting the signals to the peripheral part. One is towards the central nervous system, another one is away from the central nervous system. First, we are going to discuss about the sensory PNS. So, sensory PNS, <coughs> it is nothing but the collecting the information from the peripheral part of the body to the CNS. So, that uh, part is called by the name of sensory PNS. The sensory PNS is further divided into two parts. One is special sense, another one is general sense. What is the special sense? So, special sense are those sense, the sensations are elicited or generated or originated by the specific part of the body such as sensations are called by the name of special senses see here vision smell taste hearing equilibrium and position these are the special sense here in the special sense touch is not explained maybe for you people touch is the special sense special one is touching to your hand is the special sense but here as per the anatomy touch is not a special sense why it is not special sense because the definition the special sense 
are those senses they are elicited by the specific part for example vision vision is the special sense which is elicited by the eyes only you can't see uh, subject objects through your nose you can't smell the object you can't smell through your eyes you can't taste through your skin means taste is to the specific part smell is to the specific part vision is a specific part because of that reason these all are considered as a special senses next come to the point uh, general senses what are the general senses the sensations those are elicited from the multiple part of the body uh, for example uh, now we can take the touch skin touch can be understood by the skin touch can be understood by the mucous membrane touch can be understood by the different part of the body so because of that reason touch is not a special sense it is a general sense so general senses are those senses they are elicited or initiated by the multiple part of the body so general senses are divided into two groups one is a somatic another one is a visceral the somatic sensations are those sensation they are arising from the skin superficial fascia and locomotory system it means a touch or it may be pain from the joints or it may be muscle pain so all they are called by the name of somatic senses then visceral sense visceral sense means the sensations are arising from the organs that is called by the name of visceral sense the senses are elicited by the visceral visera or the organs that is called the visceral sense example at the time of the hcl secretion is more in the stomach then there will be pain is going to start in the stomach that is understood by the person that is called visceral sense the best example is when you are suffering from the loose motion at that time you will get the cramp in the abdomen pain in the abdomen so that pain is elicited by the organs so that is called by the name of visceral sense another example before going to the menstrual cycle menstruation the female experience the pain in the lower abdomen that is the uterine pain so these all are the visceral sense next come to the point motor pns motor pns means the information is carried from the uh, central nervous system cns to the peripheral part to do the work so that is called motor pns the motor pns is also divided into two groups that is called somatic and the one is autonomic so autonomic you can call by the name of here visceral uh, motor pns the somatic uh, motor pns means the same thing the motor activity in the skin and superficial fascia and the locomotor system so that is called somatic motor nervous system so another one is the autonomic nervous system or visceral nervous system or visceral nervous system or autonomic nervous system which is not under the control of our will it is automatically it is controlled but it is under the control of the cns autonomic nervous system is nothing but the activity going on inside the abdominal viscera smooth muscles and blood vessels so further the autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts sympathetic and parasympathetic detail we are going to discuss later so this is about the uh, uh, anatomical and physiological divisions of the nervous system thank you thank you or not